ஸ்ரீ சாய் சச்சரித்தா சாப்டர் டுவெண்ட்டி த்ரீ யோகா அண்ட் ஆனியன் ஷாமா கியோர்ட் ஆஃப் ஸ்னேக் பைட் காலரா ஆர்டினன்ஸ் புரோக்கன் ஆடியல் ஆஃப் குரு பக்தி ப்ரிலிமினரி இன் ரியாலிட்டி திஸ் ஜீவா ஹியூமன் சோல் ட்ரான்சென்ஸ் த த்ரீ குவாலிட்டிஸ் தட் இஸ் சத்வா ரஜஸ் அண்ட் தமஸ் பட் பீயிங் டிலியூடட் பை மாயா த ஹீ ஃபர்கெட்ஸ் இஸ் நேச்சர் விச் இஸ் ப்யோர் கான்ஷியஸ்னஸ் நாலேஜ் பிளிஸ் அண்ட் திங்ஸ் தேன் ஹீ இஸ் அ டூவர் and thus entangles himself in endless miseries and does not know the way of deliverance the only way of deliverance is the loving devotion towards the guru's feet the great player or actor lord sai has delighted his bhaktas and transformed them into himself his nature we regard sai baba as an incarnation of god for reasons already stated but he always said that he was an obedient servant of god though an incarnation he showed people the way to behave satisfactorily and to carry out the duties of their respective stations varnas in this life he never emulated others in any way nor asked others to have something done for him for him who saw the god in all movable and immovable things of the world humility was the virtue none he disregarded or disrespected for he saw narayan lord in all beings he never said i am god but that he was a humble servant and he always remembered him and always utter allah malik god is the sole proprietor or owner we do not know the various kinds of saints how they behave what they do etc we only know that by god's grace they manifest themselves in this world to liberate the ignorant and bound souls if there be any store of merits in our account we get a desire or interest in listening to the stories and leelas of the saints otherwise not let us now turn to the main stories of this chapter yoga and onion once it so happened that a sadhak of yoga came to shirdi with nana saheb chandorkar he had studied all the works on yoga including the yoga sutras of patanjali but had no practical experience he could not concentrate his mind and attain samadhi even for a short time he thought that if sai baba will be pleased with him he will show him the way to attain samadhi for a longer time with this object in view he came to shirdi and when he went to the masjid he saw sai baba eating chapati with onion on seeing this a thought crossed his mind how can this man eating stale bread with raw onion solve my difficulties and help me sai baba read his mind and said to nana sahib oh nana he who has the power to digest onion should eat it and none else hearing this remark the yogi was wonderstruck and he fell at baba's feet with complete surrender with pure and open mind he asked his difficulties and got their solution from baba thus being satisfied and happy he left shirdi with baba's udi and blessings shama cured of snake bite before hemadban begins the story he says about the jeeva that it can be very well compared with the parrot and that they both are bound the one in the body and the other in a cage both think that their present bound state is good for them it's only when a helper that is guru comes comes and by god's grace opens their eyes and liberates them from their bondage that their eyes are open to a greater and larger life compared to which their former bound and limited life is nothing in the last chapter it was shown how baba anticipated the calamity that was to befall on mr mirikar and rescued him from it now let the leader readers hear a story more interesting than this once shama was bitten by a poisonous snake his little fit- finger was bitten and the poison began to spread in the body the pain was also severe and shama thought that he was he would pass away soon his friends wanted to take him to the god vitoba where such cases were often sent but shama ran to the masjid to his vitoba sai baba when baba saw him he began to scold and abuse he got enraged and said oh vile batudya priest do not climb up Bef- beware if you do so and then rode go get away come down 
Seeing Baba thus red with wrath, Shama was greatly puzzled and disappointed. He thought that the masjid was his home and Sai Baba his sole refuge. But if he was driven away like this, where should he go? He lost all hopes of life and kept silent. After a while, when Baba became normal and calm, Shama went up and sat near him. Then Baba said to him, Don't be afraid. Don't care a jot, a small amount. The merciful Fakir will save you. Go and sit quietly at home. Don't go out. Believe in me and remain fearless and have no anxiety. Then he was sent home. Immediately afterwards, Baba sent Tatya Patil and Kaka Sahib Dikshit to him with instructions to the effect that he should eat what he liked, should move around in the house, but should in no case lie down and sleep. Needless to say that, these instructions were acted upon and Shama got all right in a short time. The only thing to be remembered in this connection to the, is this. The words of Baba or the five syllable mantra that is go, get away, come down were not addressed to Shama as it apparently looked. But they were a direct order to the snake and its po poison not to rise up and circulate through Shama's body. Like others, well versed in uh, Mantra Shastra, he had not, not to use any incantation, charged rice or water, etc. His words were only were most efficacious in saving the life of Shama. Anyone hearing this story and other similar ones will beget firm faith in the feet of Sai Baba. And the only way to cross the ocean of Maya is to remember the feet of Baba in the heart. Cholera epidemic. Once cholera was raging virulently in Shirdi. The residents were much frightened and they stopped all communication with the outside people. The punch of the village assembled together and decided upon two ordinances as a remedy to check and put down the epidemic. Punch means the five headmen. They were number one. No fuel cart should be allowed to come in the village. And two, no goat should be killed there. If anybody disobeyed these ordinances, they were to be fined by the village authorities and punched. Baba knew that all this was mere superstition and therefore he cared a damn for the cholera ordinances. While the ordinances were in force, a fuel cart came there and wanted to enter the village. Everybody knew that there was dearth or scarcity of fuel in the village. Still the people began to drive away the fuel cart. Baba came to know of this. He came to the spot and asked the cartman to take the fuel cart to the masjid. None dared to raise his voice against this action of Baba. He wanted fuel for his duni and so he purchased it. Like an Agnihotri, Agnihotri is the fire worshipper. Um, like an Agnihotri keeping his sacred fire alive, throughout his life Baba kept his duni ever burning all day and night. And for this he always talked to the fuel. Baba's home, that is the masjid, was free and open to all. It had no lock and key and some poor people removed some wood from there for their use. Baba did not grumble about this. Baba saw that the whole universe was pervaded by the Almighty and so he never bore enmity or ill will to anybody. Though perfectly detached, he behaved like an ordinary householder to set an example to the people. Ordeal of Guru Bhakti Let us now see how the second cholera ordinance fared with Baba. While it was in force, somebody brought a goat to the masjid. It was weak, old and about to die. At this time, Fakir Peer Mohammed of Melgaon, alias Bade Baba, was near. Sai Baba asked him to behead it with one stroke and offer it as an oblation. This Bade Baba was much respected by Sai Baba. He always sat on the right side of Sai Baba. After the chilim pipe was first smoked by him, it was then offered to Baba and others. After the dishes were served, at the time of taking meals at noon, Baba called Bade Baba and made him sit on his left side and then all partook of food. Baba paid him also daily rupees 50 out of the amount collected as Dakshina. Baba accompanied him 100 steps whenever he went away from the masjid. Such was his position with Baba. But when Baba asked him to behead the goat, he flatly refused saying, why it should be killed for nothing? Then Baba asked Shama to kill it. 
He went to Radha Krishna Mai and brought a knife from her and placed it before Baba. Knowing the purpose for which the knife was taken, she recalled it. Then Shama went to bring another knife but stayed in the Vada and did not return soon. Then came the turn of Kaka Sahib Dikshit. He was gold, not down, but had to be tested. Baba asked him to get a knife and kill the goat. He went to the Sates Vada and returned with the knife. He was ready to kill it at Baba's bidding. He was born in a pure Brahmin family and never in his life knew killing. Though quite averse to do any act of violence, still he made himself bold to kill the goat. All the people wondered to see that while Bade Baba and Mohammedin was unwilling to kill it, but this Brahmin was making preparations to do so. He tightened his daughter and with a semicircular motion raised his hand with the knife and looked at Baba for the final signal. Baba said, What are you thinking of? Go on, strike. Then when the hand was just about to come down, Baba said, Stop, how cruel you are. Being a Brahmin, you are killing a goat. Kaka Sahib obeyed and kept the knife down and said to Baba, Your word is law unto us. We do not know any other ordinance. We remember you always. Meditate on your form and obey you day and night. We do not know or consider whether it is right or wrong to kill. We do not want to reason or discuss things. But implicit and prompt compliance with Guru's orders is our duty and dharma. Then Baba said to Kaka Sahib that he would himself do the offering and killing business. It was settled that the goat should be disposed of near a place called Takia, where Fakis used to sit. Then when the goat was being taken to that place, it fell dead on the way. Hemadban closes the chapter with the classification of disciples. He says that there are three, they are of three kinds. One, first or best. Two, second or average. And Three, third or ordinary. The best kind of disciples are those who guess what their gurus want and immediately carry it out and serve them without waiting for an order from them. The average disciples are those who carry out the orders of their masters to a letter without any delay. And the third kind of disciples are those who go on postponing the carrying out of their order and make mistakes at every step. The disciples should have firm faith backed up by intelligence and if they add patience to these their spiritual goal will not be distant control of breath in going and outgoing or hatha yoga or other difficult practices are not at all necessary when the disciples get the above mentioned qualities they become ready for further instructions and the masters then appear and lead them on in their spiritual path to perfection. In the next chapter, we deal with Baba's interesting wit and humor. Bow to Sri Sai. Peace be to all.